The first link in the chain from reservoir to process facilities is the wellhead. And the basic foundation of any subsea well is the conductor. It's designed to react to all loads applied to or by the well, from thermal expansion to snagging by trolling equipment, and it provides a landing and locking profile for the wellhead housing. The wellhead housing is rigidly locked in place to give a sound structural connection between the conductor and the rest of the well. At the top, there's a dog and tooth profile which connects it with the drilling blowout preventers or BOPs and eventually the Christmas tree. Between the high pressure wellhead and the Christmas tree is the tubing hanger. It provides physical support for the production tubing and links to the downhole safety valve control lines and downhole gauges. Once it's landed and locked, the well is suspended ready for the Christmas tree to be installed. The tubing is pressure tested and a series of pressure tight plugs are set in the well so that the BOP stack can be removed. The well and the pipeline are connected via the production flow base. The tree's flow line connector is locked to the flow base which has an isolation valve between the tree and the pipeline which is manually activated by diver or a remotely operated vehicle ROV. Trees can be connected in a daisy chain arrangement clustered around a manifold or incorporated into a structural template. There are three main types of subsea Christmas tree standard production, gas lift production and water injection. They're installed from a semi-submersible drilling rig which uses a workover package to control all the hydraulically operated equipment in the tree and flow line connectors. The lower riser assembly on the tree is in two sections. The lower riser package or LRP and the emergency disconnect package or EDP. The LRP is usually a valve package which can cut wire line and possibly coil tubing and then close off the well bore in the event of a well control problem. In bad weather, if a rig stays connected to the riser, there's a risk of riser damage. The EDP counteracts this by providing the operator with a safe means to disconnect the riser from the well and reconnect it afterwards. The tree's main function is to control well flow. It does this with a series of gate valves, all of which, apart from the lower production master, are hydraulically actuated and fail-safe closed. It also provides for methanol and chemical injection, downhole safety valve control line access, temperature, pressure and sometimes flow monitoring. During any drilling or workover activities, the tree valves are controlled from the drilling rig. When the rig has completed all drilling or workover activities, the tree cap is installed. This cap is a barrier between the tree bore and the seam. It also routes the hydraulic control lines from the tree valves to the subsea control module. Jumpers connect the tree to the platform control system. When they're in place, control of the tree passes from the rig to the platform. The tree has a hydraulically operated choke to control the flow. This choke is particularly important during startup because that's when the increase in flow must be gradual to avoid damaging the well and, where there's a high gas content, overcooling the flow line. Gas lifted wells need an extra flow line and choke to control the gas flow. Gas is directed through a flow line into the tree and then injected downhole through the annulus. Most trees also have a flow meter in the gas lift line to monitor the volume of gas injected into the well. Water injection trees are very similar to production trees. The main differences are that the choke controls the flow to rather than from the well and most of the chemical injection facilities and well monitoring systems aren't needed. In some cases the choke is set to allow reverse flow so the well can be used as a producer first and then converted for water injection without disturbing the subsea equipment.